So, Nerd Amigos, I'm the Giant Talking Nerd, John Norgrove. We've got Wife here, and we're here for another Star Trek Thursday. It is Voyager O'Clock, as it always is. We're in Season 3, so we're doing Season 3, Episodes 1 through Episode 9. We're going to get to those real quickly. If you're new here, don't forget to like this video below, comment, share, subscribe, do <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Ring the bell. Um, we've got a podcast. You should listen to it. It's awesome and educational. Um, and uh, you should patronize us on Patreon, or whatever the action word for that is. Anywho, yeah. let's get into the Star Trek, shall we? So, Season 3, Episode 1, Basics, Part 2. So, the Voyager crew has been stranded on a planet that has, like, vague, vague natives, whatever, vague natives are on the planet, uh, and there's, like, t tunnels with sandworms. None of what's happening on the planet actually matters. It's, like, the least important part of the story, and it has yeah. that horrible CGI trimmer thing. Oh, um, yeah, This is does. basically just, like, what if there was natives and they were a threat, but then also, what if there was a tremor and that was a threat? And then there's also a volcano. Um, every scene that you see the volcano, they're too close, they'd all be dead. That's not how volcanoes work. One, poison gas. Two, very hot. Way hotter. Chakotay <laughs> jumps over lava to save a woman in rags to jump back over. Chakotay would have just burst into flames as his eyeballs exploded in his fucking head and melted out. Doesn't make a damn like a sense. But... I guess drama or whatever. So the real plot of the story is the doctor is a hologram and a psychopath survived the blast, but you know, because of Tuvok, he's like, ship, he's like changed his ways. Ground. And so they're trying to save the ship. And of course the murderer who loves murdering and explained to Tuvok how great murdering is and made Tuvok a little murdery, uh, doesn't want to murder no more because of Vulcan stuff. So the but doctor has to convince to him, murder. but he has to murder. Yeah, of course. And then he, at one point in time, like arguably my favorite part of this episode is he like murders a guy and he's just like shooken. And the doctor's like, he's like, I had to do it. And the doctor's like, it's smart to bring it back here. Like, uh, like it's cool, whatever. And he's just like, okay. And he just collapses on the ground into a heap and sobs a little. And you're like, yeah, that guy's going through some shit. This is rough, yeah. buddy. I feel bad for you. Uh, but, you know, you also get some sassy doctor in this where he's just like, he's like, I'm the bad guy. And Seska's like, no, you're not. And he's like, you're right. I lied. Uh, there's a hundred of us on the ship. And she's like, that's also not true. And he's like, all right, maybe there's just one of us then. And she's like, all right, well, like, like, who, wh what are you guys planning on doing? And he's like, maybe we're going to plan on murdering everybody. And she's like, are you going to do that? And he's like, I don't know, maybe not. We're going to, somebody else is going to plan on murder. The doctor just is the <laughs> most piece of shit in a conversation you could possibly and well, you can Seska's just like I'm gonna fucking punch this well, hologram well and he opens with like a hard one on Seska cause Seska like brings her her new her oh new my god yeah into, into sick bay for like a checkup or whatever so that she can like you know, it's basically just a ruse so she can come in there and, like, harass the doctor. Yeah, it's like, she just and shows up to, like, like, talk shit to a like, hologram. Blah, 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 Chakotay's baby on board this ship. And he's just like, baby ain't Chipo Chipotle's. Yeah, it's, not, it's not Chipotle's. Like, she's like, what do you mean this baby isn't Chipotle's? Yeah. And he's like, there's no Chipotle DNA yeah. in this baby. <laughs> she's she's like, she's like, I stole his DNA. I impregnated myself. I know what's going on. Like, she's trying to, like, one-up the doctor. Yeah. And the doctor's like, all right, let me educate you for a second. If you look at these base pairs of DNA, DNA here. These are not human. These are Kazon. If you look at this, this is what a human DNA would look like. You see how it doesn't match? And like the computer is sassily being like, it doesn't match, guys. It doesn't, wait, it doesn't fit here. Oh, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit here. And you're like, wow. I'm sorry. Is Seska just getting put on blast digitally it was right now? Basically, it's the culmination of this whole like Seska Chipotle baby thing. Yeah, but it's like, just... it, at like the very end. So it's like if you took this. I, I, what I really want is I want somebody to have made like a supercut of all. All of the, all the Chipotle, the Chipotle Seska's Seska baby stuff. stuff. Just that like first they're in love and then Seska no, no. So betrays them. So you can them. watch it like a Jerry Springer episode. Dude, that would be real talk. Like doctor can we, came out of that paternity test like Maury. Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, can we can we get a can we get a fan made uh, uh, Doctor Phil fucking is that my baby Seska Chipotle thing? Actually, yeah. we could probably do that. I know enough people for that. <laughs> that would be a great <laughs> idea, right? That would be fantastic. But so whatever. I mean. Like, oh, Tom Paris also, he survived. Um, <laughs> totally forgot. And he goes and gets the, um, uh, the Talaxians, and he's yeah. like, you gotta help. And they're like, mm, I don't know about this, Kazons. And he's like, come on! And they're like, all right, fine. <laughs> so they help. Uh, and inevitably, uh, the, 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 what is his bloody name? The murderer, I hate calling him that. Uh, Suter. Uh, Suter, like, gets into engineering, and they're like, the doctor's like, you gotta do it now! Or whatever the fuck. Right? Oh, because the doctor got, like, turned off and, like, 
like his little panel phaser. Yeah. And uh, and so Suter's like he knows he has to do it, and he sees the ship is under attack by Tom Harris and the and the uh, um, Talaxians, and he's just like, okay, I guess I'll do it, and then jumps out of the Jeffrey's tube, and he's just like, <laughs> just like murdering. Every he's just like dead, 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 dead. Yeah. I'm so sad about killing all these people, and you're like, you shouldn't be, because you did that fantastically. You should get like an award or something. Yeah. Holy shit. And then he gets phasered in the back, which is like, honestly really sad, because not only did the actor crush it, but Suter's like a good guy. I mean, he likes now. to murder, yeah. but he also doesn't want to like to murder, which is, yeah. I mean, really what we should all strive for, I think. <laughs> um, but so they get the ship back, and then the Voyager beams everybody back, and then the day is saved, and Voyager just is like, all right, set course for home. And then they leave, and that's the end of the episode. Um, it's, it's a, it's like a, it just sort of, dro it's just like, oh, this build up, just drop off. We're saved. Um, <laughs> whatever. So after that is flashbacks, um, where, uh, they go to a nebula, Tuvok sees some shit, he starts having weird flashbacks, um, Janeway mind melts with him, come to find out he served on the, um, Excel Excelsior? Yeah. Yeah. The Excelsior with, uh, Captain Sulu, and, and they were, that's, the, like the Nexus hits them. It, he was in. He was on the Excelsior during like the Nexus events of Star Trek Generations, which is awesome tieback uh, to a good movie. And uh, come to find out, he was just infected with a memory disease, a, a virus that gives you memories. Um, and then they just murder that virus, and everybody's back to normal. Yep. Uh, <laughs> nothing much to talk to about that. I mean, except for the fact that one. Captain Sue was the best. Um, and two, uh, the look Janeway gives Tuvok when tu when they, they, they're like, we gotta steal a lady's uniform. And Tuvok's like, okay, fine. So his commanding officer walks in and he's like, hey, Vulcan neck pinch. And she passes out and Janeway's like, we could have just asked her for her uniform. And Tuvok's like, it would be inappropriate to ask a female co-worker for her uniform. And Janeway gives him that like, what kind yeah. of look? And you're like, wow, Janeway. Okay. <laughs> we know you and Chipotle had some business, but like, relax. Uh, <laughs> so after that is, I gotta go back to that bloody episode list. Oh, shoot. Oh, you messed that up. That's fine. It's just downloading stuff <laughs> on my phone now. Ignore it. So after that is the chute, the shoot, the chute, the chute, the chute and, um, Tom Paris and Harry Kim are arrested for a crime they didn't commit. They're put in like a vague torture prison. Yep. Uh, they don't just stab all of the people that are trying to fuck with them, which results in a bunch of unnecessary drama. Yep. And then Neelix pilots his ship and docks with the fucking prison for them to escape. Yep. We get the greatest Neelix line of all time when the like police roll up on the prison that his fucking van is backed up to. And they're like, um, what the fuck's going on over here? And he's just like, I thought this was, I thought this was a Starbucks. I was just picking up groceries. He's I like, don't know what's going on right this now. This isn't where I parked my car. And they're like, yeah, fuck off. And he's like, give me one second. Now I'm gonna fuck off. And then he fucks off and he saves the day, which is great. But you yeah. just get Neelix like, Vamping for a fucking minute and a oh, half. It's the and best. And it's so good. I love Stop it. Stop trying Neelix to play. Is the best. Yeah, ne Neelix, Neelix crushes it in that. So after that is episode four, the swarm, where the A plot is that they have to cross a region of space with a species of swarm ship aliens um, that that hurt you with a. It's like they shoot you with with a phaser, but instead of knocking you out or vaporizing you or killing you, it just like hurts you real bad. Not like, oh, it's like real bad, but like real, real bad. Uh, but like the doctor can still fix it, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but the B plot, which is significantly more important on this one, is that the doctor taught himself how to sing opera, and yes. that ruined his whole mind. Yep. Um, and so they gotta initial, they gotta like turn on the like, EMH. They have to run like debug mode. Yeah, they run the like EMH debug mode in the holodeck, which is basically just another doctor. It's specifically a hologram of Dr. Zimmerman, the doc the The Doctor who made the Doctor. Wow. Uh, it's fine, it's the same actor, so it's exactly as confusing as it sounds. Uh, and Zimmerman is precisely as much of an asshole as the Doctor is, which is just solid gold. Only um, he's wearing a vest. Yeah. Oh he has a vest and he's in yellow. So, so you can tell them apart. 
<laughs> so it's mostly an episode where you're really enjoying the doctor act sassy to himself. Yeah, well, act sassy to the void, and then they edit in another doctor. So it makes it even better when you think that anytime he's being sassy to himself, he's really just being sassy to the void. Um, and then responding to it crazily. <laughs> uh, I find it a better way to interpret that episode. But, uh, yeah, whatever. They fix the doctor and everything's fine there. He, like, vaguely has memory problems now, but that only comes up when the show needs it to come up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> after that is False Prophets, episode 5, where, um, they find a planet and they're like, oh man, this planet's got stuff, like, we should, like, like, it's, this is like a poor, just, I don't know, whatever, like, no, like, no technology planet. Is it uh, Bronze Age? Yeah, like, Bronze but Age planet. In, like, but, but they, like, what detect it some like, electricity I'm stuff. I'm pretty sure that was post-Bronze Age. Yeah, it felt like, it felt like Middle Ages. Yeah. If not yeah. even a little bit more advanced than that. Like, maybe even, like, like, maybe just, like, 1800s. Yeah. Like, or 1700s. <laughs> so, whatever. Who cares? Uh, they detected some, like, energy stuff, so they go down there and come to find out there are two Ferengi down there Who because of to be silly gods. wormhole shenanigans pretending to be gods because they have a replicator and teaching this whole planet the love of being a piece of shit business person which is um a little too close to home yeah but uh for the current timeline so so existed. everybody in this planet's kind of vaguely a piece of shit business person and these two ferengi are vaguely piece of shit business people and then neelix pretends to be like the representative of he pretends to be the metatron basically yeah basically <laughs> the metatron and that works for like approximately four minutes uh but he doesn't break character not even once until he does and then he goes right back into character as though it wasn't yeah, broken which makes he looks no definitely sense. enjoyed that um scent. but whatever there's a lot of back and forth good janeway moments great neelix moments and um and then they they uh, the Ferengi either theoretically get home or die at the end. I, it's not it's clear. It's a really fantastic episode. And to be completely honest with you, it doesn't matter fuck those particular Ferengi. Yeah. Um, but it is a fantastic episode. Uh, hashtag what with that underboob. Because yeah. the like god concubines that the Ferengi have are like... They're uh, like a bunch they, of hot chicks. They're just like a bunch chick, of like like hot chicks. One chick. chick was like hired for the level of underboob. Yeah, like her just, shirt goes to here. Yeah, it's just like it's like not even not even they bought her a bra that's like twelve sizes too small. Uh, no, she's not even wearing a bra. Yeah, mad TOS vibes on this. Yeah, episode. It, yeah, it really mad was a very TOS, TOS episode. Vibes. It was a lot of fun. I, I yeah. really like False Prophets. Episode six is Remember, where they pick up some um, moss hair people and they have the ability to share memories. And at first it's a fun, and then uh, Taurus starts hallucinating about how this race basically genocided a bunch of hippies, uh, specifically like people who didn't want to use technology hippies, and uh, she's like, everybody's got to remember, and the race is like, no we don't. And then at the end she's like, maybe they should remember. And like yeah. one of them is like, you want to check it out. And then that's how that episode ends. So either that race just learned some dark history shit, or everybody ignored it, and it doesn't matter. Um, also, I feel like a little too close to comfort. A little bit, yeah. It's a very, it was a very manipulative, um, very governmentally manipulative episode. Yeah. Um, also, we get to see Janeway in a leisure outfit, so she's basically just a member of Boys to Men now. Yeah. And I'm pretty Janeway, okay with that. Janeway, backup singer for Boys to yeah, Men. Yeah. Secret in this 12th outfit. member of Boys to Men. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's that 90s white pantsuit life. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay, so after that is episode 7, Sacred Ground, where they like visit a planet and they're like fun, but they got like some priest stuff and they're visiting that and like the tour guide doesn't pay attention to Kess, and so Kess is like, what's this? And touches a thing that melts her brain. And so they're like, hey, she's gonna die. Sorry about that, I guess. And uh, obviously the whole crew is like, I'm oh, wrong. You can't yeah. like get, so, get us some help? And the guy's like, no, I mean, I can't really... Uh, so, but then Neelix finds an ancient myth that that once upon a time something like that happened to this dude's uh, son, and yeah, this guy king's, pleaded the church. King's son did it, and the so, king pleaded the church to participate in the ritual, to cross the barrier, to plead for the gods to help him. And um, so Janeway decides to do that because, like a king, she has all these subjects, 
And um, so and she vision quest. so she starts the vision quest, being like, "I'm just doing this for Kess science," and that shit doesn't work. And then she does it again. Oh yeah, and then she does it again, and this time they're like, "It's cool, man. Don't worry." And she's like, "I got this." And then it's okay. She gets bit by a snake at one point in time, which she does finger painting. TLDR: If somebody hands you a basket to put your arm in and it's hissing, don't do it. Don't put your arm in that basket. It's but that was a hallucination snake, which leads me to a question, comment below, would you get bit by a snake if I'm in hallucinating god shit? Let's put it out there. Um, so, but that was a good episode. It was a Janeway heavy episode. It was fun. Depends. Yeah, it depends on the hallucination. Depends guess, on right? the hallucination. Uh, and then episodes 8 and 9 are Futures in Part 1 and 2. So Futures in Part 1 is basically a time ship comes out of a time rift, and he's like, you guys ruined shit, and starts shooting at Voyager. And Voyager is like, what the fuck? And so they start shooting at him, chase him into a time hole, uh, and they arrive in 1996, the distant past. Uh, and they meet Sarah Silverman, and they Who find that the, uh, an astronomer. She's an astronomer, yeah. And they they find out that the time ship guy had his time ship stolen by like a like a '80s style business. Guy. Like a like literally an evil CEO. Yeah, an '80s style business. Like a not very smart Lex Luthor. An '80s style business guy. Like a like a not suit wearing Tony Stark. Again, '80s type business guy. Yeah. So a little like man. Doctor Doom. A little like most of the CEOs you can think. of. Of in public <laughs> domain. Yeah. So, you know, vaguely evil. Uh, and so, um, and then Voyager is all damaged up and stuff, so they don't have like a bunch of stuff. So they go down there, they meet up with, um, with, uh, what's her name? The astronomer. They try to get some stuff. End of the episode, uh, Braxton or uh, whatever the heck the evil C the 80s CEO's bad guy name is. Um, he downloads a bunch of stuff and downloads the Doctor. Uh, episode 9 starts with he downloads the Doctor into a mobile hollow emitter. We finally reach the mobile hollow emitter outside doors Doctor shenanigry. And um, Very so exciting. there's some sort of like vaguely garbage 007 espionage stuff happening whilst also Chakotay and Bellana Torres were kidnapped by some racist anti-government after crashing psychos, their ship after crashing into their the ship. Arizona desert, which actually looks like California City, like we may have been on that road that they yeah. were doing their movie thing so, on. Um, so, uh, like, whatever, they get kidnapped. The doctor, because he's like a hologram, is like bulletproof, basically. And, uh, well, he just bullets just go right through him, and it doesn't matter. And uh, so they get rescued, and then the bad guy's like, I'm gonna fly to the future, even though you've told me that it's gonna ruin things, because profits, money. And so he goes to do that shit, and Captain Janeway's just like, fuck this shit, so she climbs into a torpedo tube and just fires that shit manually. Uh, gets all burned up on the face and whatnot, fucking murders that guy, 100%. And then, like, the time guy who originally showed up to murder them shows up and is just like, hello! And they're like, oh, hey, we know you. And he's like, no, nah, it was a different timeline. Like, that does not, that's not how that works. I'm here to bring you back. And she's like, maybe you bring us back to Earth? And he's like, nah, that's not how this happens. We bring you back to the Delta Quadrant. And she was like, okay, sad faces. They go home. Everything's resolved, except for now the Doctor has a mobile hollow emitter. Yeah. And we get to see what yeah. shenanigans happen next. Yeah. Which brings us to an end of our journey with wait, Voyager. You missed the best part of that episode. Mm, Tom it's Paris when... smashing? Oh, Tom Paris does get to make out with Sarah Silverman. Yeah, good, good for you, Tom, Tom Paris. Paris. Good, yeah, good for you. Yeah. Uh, no, the best part of that Young whole Sarah episode Silverman, yeah. is when uh, the doctor comes to save Chakotay and Balana, and he unties Balana. So Balana, Torres, and oh, they're, Chakotay they're, they're are tied, tied up. up. So he comes over. Oh, hold on. They're tied up, hands behind their back tied up, yeah. and then their ankles like tied up. With rope. With rope. So he unties Balana's uh, legs, legs, right? And then she does this, like, okay, get my hands next. And he walks around Chipotle and unties Chipotle's hands. Well, and you see her you see her do this. Okay. Which is like So we crazy. start with having one person's hands untied and the other one's legs untied. It's like some sort of messed up fable. But that it's, was definitely the best part of that episode. That was that was a that was a pretty was a good part. Good episode. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. But honestly, both parts were were, were I really do good. love time travel. Time shenanigans. shenanigans. Yeah. And then we yeah. had a whole conversation about when 
all this time is coming. So, just as an FYI, Voyager is from the 24th century. They're a time traveling friend who tried to murder them and then tried to save them. That's from the 29th century. Discovery, jumping some time into the future, is from the 32nd century. And the Enterprise J is from the 26th century. I, I looked that up also because we were talking about starships. And time. Um, and time shenanigans. But. Uh, what's your best bit? We'll do quick best that bits. That's definitely your best my bit. Best bit. Okay, yeah. It was um, hilarious. Yeah, that is that because is it's the kind bit. of thing that's just like unscripted. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like it made like I, I feel like I feel like the script direction on that was the doctor goes and unties Bolana and Chakotay, and the take that they did that they kept yeah. was this one, was and just, that was just <laughs> natural reactions and everything that happened yeah, there. Yeah, totally, 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 totally. Best part, all of those episodes. So these are just, really good just, just not. Yeah, this season three, we're picking up steam with Voyager, and it's, it's uh, its these track. episodes are getting yeah. like intense. What about absolutely you? What's your best bit? Best bit for all these episodes is probably the sassy old lady and the two old men in the like. Uh, hey, Janeway needs to do a uh, um in the spiritual uh, 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 room. she needs to do like yeah she's in like a spiritual waiting room and the old lady's like you should come wait with us and the guys are like she's not gonna wait with us she's got stuff to do <laughs> and she's like what is this a door what is this locked or something and he's like look at her all sciency and stuff it's basically like a five minutes of like three old stand-up comedians just riffing on a lady trying to act uh it's great because there's, like, the whole time you're like, are these guys actually waiting? Is this a joke? Are they actually the gods? And it's never really resolved. They just kind of make fun of Janeway for a little bit, yeah. and then everything's okay. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, that, that for me, that's the best. That was hilarious, thing. because it was like, if the waiting room scene from Beetlejuice and, like, the door knocker scene from Labyrinth, like, melded and then yeah. set themselves yeah, it's into just, Star it's Trek. Just, it's, uh, that it whole episode is yeah. great. It's just, a, I love Janeway. It's a yeah. Janeway-centric episode. But, either way, I have been John Norgrove. This has been Wife. This has been Star Trek Thursday. We have watched Season 3, Episodes 1 through 9 of Star Trek Voyager. And, uh, yeah, it was really good. Don't yeah. forget to like this video, comment below, share, subscribe. Ring the bell. Uh, yeah, do that. Uh, listen to our podcast, follow us on Patreon, do do all the stuff. Do all of the things. Watch more Star Trek. We have a ton of Star Trek stuff. Watch more of it. Um, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the flip side, yeah? Yeah. Yeah.